Now at 10, NEO A&M College in Miami wants to let adults know it's not too late to earn that degree. Plus, Kansas Governor Kelly tours a new health care education center in southeast Kansas. And artists and art lovers get ready for Art Walk 2024 in Pittsburgh. The four states most watched news starts now. We have a chance for some serious storms heading our way. This is KOIM News at 10. I'm Dow Quick. Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us. Yeah, really from this point on until Sunday evening, we have a lot of action, which is going to be rolling in. Already we've got showers and thunderstorms out there developing right now. Southeastern Kansas, northeastern parts of Oklahoma. There's going to be a lot of areas that get a lot of rain tonight and tomorrow, which we definitely need. Now, here's the good news. We don't have a severe threat with these. These are just going to be good old showers and thunderstorms, but you can see them really popping up. Neotache, Fredonia, Chanute, down just south of Columbus, Miami, all the way down toward Pineville and Knoll and into Benton County. And watch how these just continue to pick up through the night. Look at the coverage because everybody needs rain. Showers and thunderstorms may be a little bit loud at times, but I'm not anticipating anything too strong or severe. Rain continues through the morning hours, really most of the day tomorrow. We're going to have showers and thunderstorms across the region. Then we have three days of severe weather. We're going to be talking about that here in just a bit. See you soon. NEO A&M College in Miami today hosted an outreach event to let right. adults know it's not too late to get a degree. The Dogs and Degrees event gave people the chance to stop by, grab a hot dog, and learn about the Reach Higher program. That program is designed for working adults who want to finish an associate's degree. You're a working person and you've got everything going and life's a challenge anyway. Any little obstacle can throw you off and keep you from coming back. And so it's our hope that we can help them get over those little obstacles and come back and get, um, you know, look at like life ahead, especially if you got kids, you know, like I can do it, you can do it. Be that example for their kids. And that's a big motivator for a lot of adult students. The event also featured giveaways for kids and adults, as well as a drawing for prizes for those who apply to NEO. Crowder College in Yosho will have two new programs beginning this fall. Engineering technology is intended to train students for careers as engineering designers or drafters. Geographic information system is designed to develop skills for storing, analyzing, and visualizing geographic information such as maps, satellite images, and demographic data. Or what do we see job opportunities, especially in our area, so that people don't have to relocate? So we'll look at those things first. And then, of course, we have to be physically responsible with what we're doing. So making sure that we have, we already have the facilities, basically, to teach these classes and do so. We had drafting classrooms. We have the computer technology that we need to be able to offer that program. And College says both programs have high demand in the job market and can be completed relatively quickly. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly visits a new health care education center in Pittsburgh. Governor Kelly toured the John Parolo Education Center on the campus of the Community Health Center of Southeast Kansas. Members of the health center's leadership team and board of directors joined the governor on the tour and for a discussion on the importance of the center's commitment to the area. This place has been vital uh, to Southeast Kansas for decades. Uh, and it will remain that way. And uh, that's why I'm so pleased with everything that they're doing, because they recognize the, the great need that there is down here. And, you know, they're responding to it. And they're looking towards the future. The governor also referenced the Medicaid expansion in Missouri. And what she says is the success that state has had keeping hospitals and clinics running since then. Pitt State's Axe Library today held its spring book sale. Every year, the library collects a range of donated materials for the sale, everything from fiction to romance to history and more. Prices range from one to two bucks per book. Proceeds help fund library programs. Some local artists and organizations are ready for the Pittsburgh Art Walk. That event promotes a festival-like atmosphere with live music, art demonstrations, and community activities. KOIM's Fernandez Silva has more. As big fans of Joker and Harley Quinn, Ashlyn Denon and her husband decided to incorporate the characters into their wedding. Two years later, they are taking the couple 
to Pittsburgh, this time in a different way. We did the Harley Quinn diamonds on the side with the split die because, you know, Harley comic book was black and red. And then we got Aston Martin in his purple pants, his Joker green top knot, and his smile. <laughs> Molly and Aston, now Harley and Joker, are some of the attractions at the Pittsburgh Art Walk. And it brings art and our pets together um, for me. Uh, two things I love the most, my animals and art. Denon is joined by more than 100 other local artists and organizations at the event. Meg McCoy, for example, is getting ready to participate in the event for the third time. There's really no way to access your community when you're creating artwork alone in your home. And uh, it, the amount of people that Art Walk has connected me with, I went from, you know, just drawing in my room to making a career out of art. For her, this is an opportunity to be a part of the city's cultural scene. Basically, every artist in town shows up and shows out, shares their work. People who run Art Walk are really committed to making sure that Pittsburgh culture is appreciated and accessible, and I'm just, I'm all about that. In Pittsburgh, Fernanda Silva, KOEM News. Pittsburgh Art Walk starts at 5 p.m. on Friday. It's held on Broadway between 7th and 4th Streets. If there's severe weather, well, then that event is going to be canceled and will not be rescheduled. Organizers ask the public to keep updated on the event's social media page. The gorillas proved to be queens of the jungle at home this year on the softball field. Brock Baldrige has highlights from Pitt State's latest home defense coming up later in sports. But up first, Oklahoma's governor signs an education law concerning cursive writing. Clashes between police and pro-Palestinian demonstrators are intensifying. Protests at Columbia University in New York are now in their eighth day. And today, the Speaker of the House was on campus calling on the school's president to restore order. Naomi Ruckham has the latest. Law enforcement moved in on pro-Palestinian protesters at USC on Wednesday. Earlier, they clashed with campus police after officers removed a tent encampment. University leaders say many of the demonstrators did not appear to be affiliated with USC. And as a result, campus gates are now only open to students and faculty. On day eight of protests at Columbia University in New York, the school said it is making important progress with protesters, but has given students a deadline to dismantle their tents. We are advocating for life. We're advocating for an end to massacre. Protesters say they will not leave until Columbia agrees to cut its business ties to Israel. U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson spoke at the Ivy League school on Wednesday, just yards away from protesters. Today, Hamas issued an endorsement statement of the protesters on this campus. They called them the future leaders of America. It is detestable. The Louisiana Republican called on Columbia's president to resign if she can't bring order to what he described as chaos. Cherished traditions of this university are being overtaken right now by radical and extreme ideologies. They place a target on the backs of Jewish students. It's never in my life I felt more afraid for my life like here. While at the University of Texas, Austin, police in riot gear confronted about 200 demonstrators. Texas Governor Greg Abbott said the protesters belong in jail. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. New York Governor Kathy Hochul says she has no plans to send in the National Guard to Columbia. Columbia announced that because of the unrest, there will be a remote option for upcoming final exams. Graduation is set to take place on campus in three weeks. A Tennessee bill allowing teachers to carry guns in schools is heading to the governor after a House vote. Opponents worry it could be dangerous, while supporters say they want a way to stop school shooters quickly. About half of U.S. states have some kind of law allowing armed educators. That's according to the Giffords Law Center. Some states let people with concealed carry permits keep guns in locked cars on K-12 through campuses. Some states go further, allowing schools to decide whether individuals can carry firearms. Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt signed into law a bill requiring cursive handwriting instruction for students in third through fifth grade. 
The bill's sponsor says learning cursive handwriting is proven to improve students' neural and motor function as well as their grammar, handwriting, and spelling. He also says it can help children with reading historical documents. 24 states require cursive handwriting instruction. School meal programs are headed in a healthier direction. The U.S. Department of Agriculture announced new meal standards that will limit added sugar and sodium. Beginning in the 2025 to 2026 school year, certain products like breakfast cereals, yogurt, and flavored milk will have limits on added sugar, with a full 10% cap on added sugars by the 2027 to 2028 school year. And while the USDA's initial proposal suggested a gradual reduction in sodium, the final rule requires that sodium be cut by 15% in lunches and 10% in breakfast by the 27-28 school year. A little later, a pair of Purple Dragons signed their letters of commitment today. Brock Baldridge has that story in sports. Plus, we have an active next four days of weather. We're going to be talking about that coming up next. Fans are welcome. Well, it actually turned out to be a pretty nice Wednesday for us today. Partly sunny skies across the region. Uh, temperatures were great as we went into the mid 70s during the afternoon, but the weather gets a little rocky as we go through the next four and a half days. Actually, starting right now outside, we're already getting some showers and thunderstorms. Nice shot. This is Indigo Sky Casino and Resort. Of course, Indigo is just outside of Seneca, Missouri. All right, look at the showers and thunderstorms blossoming. Southeastern Kansas stretching back into extreme southwestern Missouri. And we are getting a little bit of thunder. In fact, you can see the lightning bolts here. So near Pineville, just south of Neosho, and then stretching back into Ottawa County. Showers, a few thunderstorms, Cherokee County, Labette County. You can see a little bit of thunder south of Parsons and then heading over toward Fredonia and Chanute. These will continue to expand in coverage a little bit in intensity as we go through the overnight hours. I'm not anticipating anything severe tonight, which is good news, but this is wave number one of three waves which are going to affect us as we go through the next several days. All right, let's look at severe weather. Severe weather tomorrow, mainly out to our west. We may get some strong to low grade severe ones in here by Friday morning, but most of the severe weather stays west tomorrow. All right, now on Friday, this is a big question mark. We're gonna have morning thunderstorms. If we can clear out in time, we'll get scattered thunderstorms that will be uh, most likely severe. So a moderate threat if they can get going. Saturday is our highest threat. Uh, you can see a high threat for severe weather really from Kansas City, Wichita to Oklahoma City into southeastern Kansas, then a moderate lower threat once you get off toward our east. And then on Sunday, a moderate threat for severe weather again during the afternoon. So this is gonna be a very active stretch. All right, rain picking up tonight through the morning, tapers late, back up tomorrow night, and then starts to taper again Friday afternoon. So let me walk you through time. Scattered showers, thunderstorms across the region tonight, picking up in coverage, also intensity as we go through the overnight hours. As we go through the morning tomorrow, showers, thunderstorms, here's 1 p.m., thunderstorms continue through the afternoon. Again, some of these could be a little bit stronger, not anticipating severe. These work out, tomorrow evening, but here we go again, right after midnight, showers and thunderstorms back in. Some of those guys could be a little stronger, maybe low grade severe into Friday morning. Then this is where the question mark is. If we can get some sunshine Friday afternoon, we're gonna have scattered, not a whole bunch of storms, but scattered thunderstorms that will most likely go severe as we go through Friday evening. These will push out and then we get a break for about 24 hours and then it comes back in again. All right, kind of chilly tomorrow, upper 50s, periods of showers, thunderstorms throughout the day, 62 degrees for a high. And look at this, here's our potential rainfall over the next four days. We need the rain, but we're gonna get a lot of it, a lot of areas, three, four, five, six inches, which could cause some flash flooding at times. 62 tomorrow. Possible alert days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday due to that severe weather threat drying out on Monday. Yeah, it might be true we need the rain, but the ground can only take so much. Exactly. So That's right. 
Hey, you should be ready to prepare for the possibility of severe weather this weekend. During severe weather, parents are not only trying to keep kids safe, but also calm. For the James family in Neosho, their storm shelter is a big part of their severe weather plans. The day we purchased our storm shelter and they brought it to us, we used it that afternoon. Like they installed it and we were in it within an hour. If folks can't afford a storm shelter, you know, if, you, if they don't have a basement, if they can't afford a storm shelter, then again, identify a place in their home that's safe for them and know what it's going to be and how they're going to be there. For tips on preparing for severe weather, go to our website, koimnewsnow.com. Coming up in sports, Pitt State softball looks to stay undefeated on their home field. Plus, a pair of high school basketball standouts signed to play at the next level. Brock Baldridge has those stories in mind. The Pitt State softball team is 20-0 in playing on their home field this season. The Gorillas begin the final regular season homestand by facing Newman for a doubleheader. Originally scheduled for Friday, but we bump things up to Wednesday afternoon. Pittsburgh State takes the field against the Newman Jets. In the circle for the Gorillas, the freshman phenom Ava Laurent in the first inning. She gets the swing and the miss. Next batter also swings and misses, then Laurent Finishes the inning as she strikes out the side. She pitches six complete innings in this one and strikes out nine. So we go to the fourth inning now. It's still scoreless as Sydney Sneed steps in and hits a missile up the middle off of the second baseman's glove. That scores another run and the Gorillas are on the board first, one to nothing. So we head to the sixth inning now. Pitt State leads three to one as Maddie Fernandez belts this ball into Souvenir City. It's a three run home run and that gives the Gorillas a 6-1 to one lead. We head to the final inning of the ball game now. And closing things out in center field is Heather Arnett and she makes a spectacular diving catch to seal this one up. Pitt State takes game one by winning this one 6-1. to one. In game two of the doubleheader, Pitt State completes the sweep of Newman by winning this game 3-1. to one. The Gorillas now have a shot to win a conference championship on their home field, Pitt State. Is set to host number five Central Oklahoma this Saturday at 1 p.m. And across state lines, the Missouri Center Lions kick off their final home stand this season with an upset win over number five Central Oklahoma. The Lions win the first game five to three. However, they lose the second game six to nothing. So MSSU splits the doubleheader and will wrap up their final home game this season this Saturday at noon against Newman. Well, Wednesday marks a very special day for the Pittsburgh High School girls and basketball high high school basketball programs. Two of the top players in the Southeast Kansas area signed their national letters of intent to play at the next level. One of the best players in program history is Mason English, who is officially signed to play basketball at Link Academy next season in Branson, Missouri. Mason is the all-time leading scorer in school history and was voted unanimous first team all SCK this past season. Meanwhile, sharing the spotlight with Mason is Pittsburgh senior Jacqueline Hall, who is going to continue her basketball career at Missouri Southern. She had a handful of interest from different schools around the area, but ultimately chose to sign closer to home. I'm just so excited to get up there with all of those girls, which I once viewed as these big college girls, these really great players, and now I'm getting the opportunity to play with them, which I'm really, really excited for. Sophomore year, junior year, I kind of felt like I needed to step up my game, you know, and try to provide for the team more and then after that I just realized that no one can really stop me in the in the SEK and that's basically how it is you know Woods came in his first year was my freshman year it was a little iffy and then we've had some bumps in the rows but you know everything turned out pretty good well we're still in the early stages of the NBA playoffs the Oklahoma City Thunder are back home for game two for the first round OKC has an opportunity to take a two to nothing lead so tonight Thunder at the Paycom Center for another playoff game. Oklahoma City won game one on Sunday night, winning that contest by only two points. This game is in, currently in progress. At last check, Oklahoma City leads things 82-65 in the third quarter. In St. Louis, the Cardinals taking on the Diamondbacks. Nolan Arenado ties this game up right here with the line drive in the left field. That scores a one, run. It's 1-1. One one. Next batter, it's a wild pitch. Look at this. Wilson Contreras scores a run to get the Cardinals a 2-1 lead. So we head to the eighth inning now. Ducks are on the pond. Bases are loaded for Lars Newtbar, and he comes through with a big hit here. That bounces off of the wall for a two-run double. St. Louis takes the series finale. Cardinals in this game 5-1. 
And also, congratulations to Riverton head baseball coach Danny Weaver. 300th win as head coach wow. for the Rams. Wow, quite a milestone for sure. We'll be right back. Hey, this would be fun. Art Forms Gallery in Pittsburgh hosted a fused glass workshop today for some sixth graders. Staff at the gallery treated the kids from College Heights Christian School in Joplin to a lesson in making glass art. The gallery wanted to give kids a different perspective on making art. We understand that art is more than paper and, and you know, paper and, yeah, paper and paint and such, that glass can be 3D shape uh, with what they're taking away and how to cut glass. Just a new experience with a glass art medium. Kids also got to take in some of the art in the Pittsburgh Library. A fun field trip for those kids. We have some storm chances moving in. Down. We do. We have showers, even some thunderstorms out there right now. Showers have been picking up across the region. Check them out across southeastern Kansas. It, kind of sliding off toward the south and to the east. These are going to be non-severe, but it, it could be a little bit of a loud night across the region. These are going to be sticking around all the way through most of the day tomorrow, high of 62. Then severe weather threat really starts to pick up late tomorrow night, all the way through Sunday. So I hope you've mowed because it may <laughs> be a little too wet for <laughs> the next few days, so but we saying, need the rain. You're saying I have an excuse not to mow if I haven't already. Yeah, we'll go over that. So that's all I need. Final sports note. Fairlands High School slow pitch softball team. They clinch a trip to the state tournament. So congratulations to the Owls and their players. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget the morning show starts at 5 a.m. And let's make it a great tomorrow. Closed captioning on.